All right, raise your hands if you've ever been hit with one of these. The king of Africa sending you an email that he wants to send you all his royal belongings because you're the chosen one. Or Coca-Cola emailing you and telling you that you won their lottery, even though you never took part in any of their lotteries. Scams are everywhere, especially with the internet, they've spread so much. But did you know design is one of the biggest areas that scam artists exist? Why? Because we need apps or websites to be designed. We need jobs as designers or clients as designers. We also face scams in areas that we never expected. Today, I'm going to share some very interesting areas where clients or designers have been scammed often of money. Also, I'll have timestamps for various topics, for various discussion points. So you can always skip to a point if you want to skip to a certain area. Now, the biggest one that you might see on the internet, especially on platforms like LinkedIn or job portals, it's called fake UX jobs. Fake UX jobs are as simple as it sounds. These are jobs posted by companies or organizations trying to bait designers to design for them or to join the organization. Now, how is this a scam? Very simple. Apply for their job and the next thing you know, they don't answer for weeks. Then when your expectation is no more, they email you or message you saying that you have been chosen to join their organization or to join their company. And they give you an insane amount of money. They're, pro they're probably giving you five times of what your last employer was. And this is so exciting for you because you've gotten a great opportunity from a somewhat well-known company or what seems to be a well-known company. After that, what happens is kind of tragic. You are asked to make some designs for them as an assignment or to prove that you're making something for them. Or in certain rare cases, they will hire you, send you a letter, this, that, everything is in place and everything seems good. You even have someone to speak to in that organization. However, when you join that organization, you do some work for them, they don't send you a payment, they simply block you out. Same with assignments. If you've completed an assignment, they will just keep the assignment and never call you back or even email you and tell you that you've not been chosen. But simply take the designs and there have been certain cases I have seen where designers see their own designs on someone else's page or someone else's organization. That is terrible. The next scam is also quite simple and it kind of trails on from the first one. It's very similar. Often designers design something. So for example, you made a UI design, you worked six months, maybe even a year making a application or a product or a website. You put it on Behance. A few months later, you see the same project, the same Behance, LinkedIn, whatever projects in their portfolios or on their LinkedIn. That is super sad. It happened with me. I have seen some designers literally just pick my designs, paste it onto their Behance or whatever, and they claim that they have made that design. And that is so sad because in certain cases, they get the opportunity and you miss out on it. Now, the next few scams, you need to be aware and beware before taking any steps. There are certain scammers who will email you probably in a very formal manner, tell you that they want some website or app to be designed. Great, fantastic. They're also paying well. So what the heck? Maybe I'll go ahead with this. This is a mindset that might get you in trouble. A lot of organizations might fake them, just like they fake on LinkedIn or job portals. They will send you an email from an authentic looking email, share with you all their requirements. They've, they're in touch with you. You're making their designs. At the end of this entire process, when you have the designs ready with you, they ask you for your bank details, everything, and they transfer the full amount into your account. However, sometimes they might transfer say 50 other dollars into your account or a hundred dollars above what they promised. And they might say, hey, this is a tip from us. We really appreciate these designs and we would love to work with you in the future as well. So you're happy, they're happy, they have gotten their designs, that's it. However, now what happens is, now later on, since they've already sent you that extra cash, they might say, hey, we've sent you $10 extra or maybe $50 extra. Can you transfer that $50 into this account? We would highly appreciate it. Otherwise, we will be in big trouble. Since they trusted you with your work, since they paid you well, 
you're all good with it and you go ahead and transfer this money into someone else's account. Just 20, 30, 40 dollars. You have no loss in transferring a small amount, right? Wrong. The account they paid you through was either a fake account or the credit card or the check bounces from their end. Because the account was fake or the credit card or debit card was stolen, the bank transfers back the money to the original owner or to the original account. Fine, they lost their money. You're happy that they have lost their money and you've won the battle. Not yet, buddy. Remember the $50 that you sent to them or to a random account? They have earned $50 through you through a stolen account. And the stolen account cannot be traced because you were in touch with them. So now they have an application or a website that they can potentially use somewhere else. And they have $50, $60 in hand extra. Now they can use that $50 to launch their product or website. And you, my friend, have $0 in hand and you worked so long and so hard. Of course, you'll have to wait till the end of this video to, to find out how you can, you know, prevent this or if something happens like this to you, you can, you, how you can get out of it. Now, this was about fake clients, but what about fake designers? Yes, my friends, maybe someone out of you guys have tried this before. And if you have, you well, you'll figure out. Some people who are making other people lose trust in us, in designers like us, who basically email people, email potential clients about their work. They might show you past work, share proposals with the clients, and everything is good and all. They're also great with communication. The clients will rarely doubt that you're fake. However, such designers will create something, maybe copy something from somewhere else. After a few weeks, send you the final product, before they send you the actual files, they will ask you for an advance or may, they might even ask you for an, a com the complete amount after they've done the design. You're happy with their designs and you'd like to move forward. However, once they receive the money or once they receive the advance, they will <laughs> go away and never come back. And the best part is they always use an email that cannot be traced either to their IP address or to certain person in general. Clients sometimes lose trust because of this, and this has happened to a lot of people. Now, another scam is called dark patterns, and it's not exactly a scam in the legal sense. It's a scam with people, with people who are using a product. There have often been times when you've gone to a website and there's a pop-up telling you to pay up or telling you to subscribe to the email list. Very simple, right? However, if I don't want to subscribe, I should be able to get out of that pop-up. There are certain websites which make it so hard to see the cross icon or the close button. And you can't get out of the pop-up. Even if you refresh the page, it'll come back up. This is called dark patterns in UX and UI design, where designers use certain tactics to either fool the users or to force the users to do something they don't exactly want to do in the moment. I won't expand too much on this. I've done a complete video on this called Dark Patterns for UX UI Designers. Make sure you check out the video after watching this one. I think it's a fantastic resource and I've shared quite a few ways people use dark patterns in UX. Now, before we move on to the biggest scam that we all do, I want to give a quick shout out or a mention to a scam which has been going on on LinkedIn, which I think kind of pisses me off. A lot of so-called designers, graphic designers, illustrators are taking real life pictures of photographs from various sources, Instagram, Behance, and they're literally converting that into black and white and adding a sort of sketch or pencil effect in such a way that you can't even figure out whether it's a sketch or it's real life. Well, turns out some of these people are faking it completely to get tens of thousands of likes on LinkedIn. And it's true. I've seen a post where there is a lady posing and it's it supposedly is a sketch. But below that, somebody has commented an actual real life photo from Instagram of some random lady who that person has tried to replicate through a fake sketch. So if you go ahead, look at something like this on LinkedIn or anyone else, question yourself before even giving a like, because you're actually promoting such people's work, even though it's not real. Now, moving on to the biggest scam that we all face in everyday life as designers. It's called imposter syndrome. A lot of people have heard of this term, but what exactly is it? 
we think that we are scamming others. I've put a simple definition of scam right here on the screen so that you can look at what scam even means and now compare it to what we feel about us or ourselves sometimes. We often feel that we're not good enough for a certain project, company, or the money that we're earning. We consider our ourselves as scam artists or people who are scamming someone else for money or for some other gain. Imposter syndrome can often push you down and make you just stay at a certain level. Oh, I'm not good enough to get to the next level. That kind of mindset can ruin and will ruin your career in the long term because you'll stay at one position for the rest of your life because you think you're not worth the next step. But the best part is it's super easy to snap out of something like this. Taking this next step without thinking of anything else. The imposter syndrome will never leave you. It's always going to be behind your back, be following you and never get rid of your feelings or emotions. However, you can always try and push it back a little more so that you can focus on your craft, focus on your work without thinking of it. The best way to get rid of it is to not get rid of it and to be mindful that you'll always keep on thinking of that about yourself. Over time, you will gradually increase confidence inside yourself, in yourself and in your work. And over time, you will get rid of imposter syndrome till a certain extent. So there's always hope for it. Apart from that, to avoid certain scams, make sure you check what other designers or other clients have created. If a client approaches you, don't accept their proposal immediately. Look at their work, look at their email ID, go to their website, see what they're all about, how much work they've done. If their website is either unavailable or you can't seem to figure out where they belong to or where they come from or even see any LinkedIn or Instagram posts, they are 100% fake. Stay away from them. Also, make sure you double check who's sending you an email and maybe consider getting onto websites like Fiverr, Upwork or even things like Freelancer. Even though they take a small amount of commission, your security is guaranteed from them. Even if the client is fake, they have to pay you upfront without any clauses on websites like Fiverr or Upwork. Never take money apart from that on any other website like PayPal or through direct bank transfer. That can be a very iffy thing or a very big red flag. I hope you will keep safe next time you meet a client or a designer. You will double check uh, about the background and the stuff they've done before you've done it or before you go ahead with you know, taking them or employing them. I post such amazing content every Monday and Thursday. I'm branding this series as designer talks because I'm literally just talking to you guys. Also share this video as much as possible.